Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first in the series of Thomas Frost Executive Conversations. Uh, today, we're joined by Angelo Manos from the ANZ, and we will be discussing the uh, consequences of the coronavirus on, uh, the, on our teams, on our businesses, on our, on our customers. Um, Angelo is a long-term ANZ leader who is currently the general manager of the commercial broker space. Um, but he's previously worked for ANZ in a number of different geographies and managed through different crises. Angelo is also somebody that I have been working very closely with over the last 15, 20 years and invariably is somebody who I believe um, it's worth listening to when he talks, uh, which is why he's first cab off the rank. Um, in terms of a snapshot of where we are today, uh, August 25th, 2020, there have been just under 25 million confirmed cases of the coronavirus and just over 800,000 deaths. Worryingly, there are still around a quarter of a million new confirmed cases every day, and that number doesn't seem to be dropping. Um, in Australia, the situation is less critical, although it's still barely controlled, with a total of 25,000 infections recorded and current active cases of around 4,000. Um, again, these are just the recorded numbers, not the confirmed numbers. Um, so we know the actual numbers must be higher. The economic impacts are also huge and not clearly understood yet, with a rough estimate of around 5.2% contraction in global GDP. Emerging markets are impacted less, potentially only 2.5%, and the more developed markets uh, bearing the brunt with a 7% contraction. Australia seems to be insulated somewhat with a predicted contraction of only 1.2 or 1.3%, or about $34 billion. Um, I'm keen to get Angelo's perspective on a number of things, including those numbers, but also how ANZ is acting to, um, to support its staff and its customers and how things are tracking for the bank at the moment. Angelo. Uh, thanks, Hugh. And, um, you know, you, sort of, you, you mentioned that we're in a less critical position in, in, in Australia, but you, you, look, you look at Australia and on, on one extreme, you've got WA where you know, life is as normal as it's been over the last six months where, you know, they're all back at work or the majority back at work, their rosters, they're rostered, they can go out, they can socialise and do all those great things that, um, you know, sort of you know, Victorians can't do. And you've got Queensland that looks and feels more like WA and you've got New South Wales that's sort of sitting in the middle. So in terms of, you know, you know what does Australia look and feel like? Well, Victoria is very different to WA. So yeah. I kind of think we sort of are not in a not in a great spot, not in a great spot in Victoria. Um, however, we've probably got you know fingers crossed. Um, you know the worst days behind us, and yep. infections coming off. Hopefully, we can we can return to some life of uh, normality. It's a, it's a two or a three speed economy at the moment, isn't it? I think here where yep. we've got different rates of recovery, we've got different economic projections and outlooks, but hopefully, yeah, over the course of the next few months, we all stabilise to some form of, um, of optimistic recovery over the course of the next year or two. Now, you, you, you mentioned a lot of numbers. It's usually us bankers quoting, quoting a whole bunch of numbers. So I'll, Some I'll, more research today. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll, I'll, let you, uh, I'll let you take the glory there. I guess, you know, from the, from the start of the, of, of, the, of the pandemic, you know, one of the, I think, you know, one of the things Australia's done very, very well from a, from a banking or a finance perspective is we've got a, we've got a government, both state and federal, um, and, and and regulators and the banking fraternity that are all aligned around we're going to get through this. We we've been here before in terms of other pandemics, whether it be the Spanish flu or other crises, whether it be you know Y two K or Asian financial crisis you know, the 80s slash 90s recession in Australia and so on. There's, there's a myriad of financial crises and, and or, you know, pandemics that the world's been through. And we do, we do come out the other end. So we need to stay focused and vigilant and aligned and, and, you know, to ensure that business today survives through the, through the, through the humps we have and is in, is in good shape at the, at the other end of this. And, you know, we can... You know, we can look at WA. WA hospitality is open and trading well. New Zealand was our beacon, I guess, for quite some time. But they, you know, they've had a little slip up, as a lot of places in Europe have. So they've, you know, they've gone through their second wave. Victoria's, you know, in, been impacted a bit more than most. So if we can nip it in the butt and get business back and trading, 
all the government incentives like job job keeper, job seeker, you know, uh, government guarantee facilities, 250 moving to a million. Um, all of those help. All of those help business, you know, through this through this lull. Yeah, we'll, we'll come out of it. Um, the, the banks, whether it be ANZ or the, the the other majors in particular, they're all supporting their customers with those various relief packages, and will continue to do so where it makes sense. Um, but also, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to stimulate some, um, some, some growth, particularly in the small business space with various rate, um, rate and product specials. We're all aligned, we're all focused, we all know that, you know, for, for us to continue um, to, 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 to live in this great country, um, we need to support each other through these challenging times. Sure. So it seems there are two different types of crises Oh, there'd be more than two, but there's the crisis that's driven by the financial services or by the econom economy. So you could say the GFC, as an example, was a result of fiscal policies that were bent or flexed or stretched to the extreme and resulted in, in a broader um, economic not collapse, but, but catastrophe, certainly, which then had broader social uh, consequences. This one seems to be quite different in so much as it's been driven by a non-financial input, but it's having a massive financial output. So yes. from your perspective, having been through certainly the GFC where you were in New York, I think at the time, That's um, it. and this one, how do you think those two circumstances compare and contrast? What can we learn from, from the first or from the GFC that we can, we can apply to this? And what do you think we could learn from this that we would be able to apply potentially to the next thing that, that may be around the corner? Yeah, uh, your, your point's an interesting one because... Um, Yes, there's a lot of the crisis that we've dealt with have been financial crisis as such. Um, this one, yeah, started as a, you know, a, a social or medical or health crisis, and you know, and 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 it's morphed into you know having you know social and financial and a whole bunch of other impacts. Yeah, and I guess the difference with this is, I don't think there's a country or a place on earth that it, it hasn't been it hasn't touched. So, um, where the GFC, there were, there, were, there were many places that were, you know, a, a little better off. And, and you know, I, re, I reflect in, in Canada and Australia, in the developed world, were, were, were two, I guess, um, countries that were isolated from the, you know, the, the, the broad impacts of the GFC. You know, more isolated than the US yes. and you know, Germany, France, England, and so on. So we were much better off comparatively. Um, yeah, uh, you know, this pandemic and doesn't discriminate as such, I guess, where, um, you know, us humans being around others, whether it's, you know, in our homes, entertaining at work, you know, we've got to, we've got to cut down on all of that. Yeah. Given that, you know, much of our society is geared around human interaction and the way we shop, the way we play, the way we entertain and so on. And that's been, you know, cut kind of all swept off. out from under us. Well, hopefully temporarily. Um, yeah, 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 you know, you sort of fast forward and, and if we're not going out and, and we're not spending on clothing and entertainment, well, they, they, those venues and operators are obviously being impacted and, and, and the fly-on effect, you know, continues. So, I guess, you know, for a banker, you know, your more predictable route is a financial crisis and you're, you're, you're probably better equipped to deal with that. Mm -hmm. uh, a social that turns into a financial crisis is more wide reaching and broader and, and harder to deal with. And we're all learning through this. Yeah. Um, we're learning, uh, you know, we're learning you know, simple things around not going into an office, not being able to be close to your team physically. However, using this type of um, this type of technology that we're probably taking a little for granted, um, you know, Zoom and Microsoft Teams and all those great things are, are, are now um, are now how we we live our lives and how yep. we interact with our teams and our and 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 our partners and so on. So yeah, we're learning through it, and I guess the the financial. The, the financial side of things, when you've, as I said earlier, when you've got alignment of government regulator and, and the system all in one line, that's, that's a secondary. It's how do we deal with the sort of social impacts? And, and when I say social, our teams are being isolated 
since in Victoria since sort of mid March, yep. and our kids, those of us that that do have kids, are, are you know all learning from home, and then you've got the the you know the I guess the added pressure of everyone being in a confined space for long periods of time, and I love my family like most people do, but I also like having some um, some you know some space. I guess we all you know like having some space and you know. Yeah, having the know. luxury of choosing space or not space that's that, that's yeah. the ideal scenario yeah and 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 you know in victoria particularly um you know we've been told to stay home and and and, and stay home for 23 hours a day which um yeah over a long period of time you know does take its toll so we need to balance you know that you know healthy healthy mind um aspect and from you know our sort of younger to our more experienced workers and the challenges they're, they're, they're facing, especially mm. withdrawn from society for, the last, for those long periods of time. And I think of some younger people that, you know, are, are, living, um, are living alone in, in, you know, one bedroom flats or, or, or studios that yeah. aren't, who aren't able to have the, you know, the comfort of their kids and their, 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 their partners um, to, to get them through those, um, those more challenging times. Yeah. So I guess, and, and, and it's hard to measure the social impact. You know, it, it's, a lot, it's a lot easier to measure a financial output or, or an input and an output. It's a lot harder to, to measure those social impacts. Um, and they're probably a little longer lasting. Yes. If, if we look at the inputs and the outputs, this is an interesting one as well, that, that I think the inputs into this economic crisis have been social and have been health related. Once we can release or, or relax the lockdown conditions and we can all go back out and we can return to our previous spending habits, our previous socializing habits, shopping, catching up with friends, these sorts of things, do you think that the recovery profile will be markedly different to the GFC in this instance? Because let's say a vaccine is, is released, you know, say early, mid next year, hopefully, and by the end of next year, most of us have, um, have had an opportunity to be vaccinated. Do you think there's a far greater chance that the recovery profile will be more of a, a V shape, taking us back to where we were um, economically as a result of the, the input having been taken away? So the, the coronavirus not becoming an issue at that point forward, um, which means we're dealing purely with legacy issues from the previous 12, 18 months. Uh, but ultimately, we can return to the lives that we had and return to our previous spending habits. Interesting question. Um... And I'm probably not the best person to answer that question. Um, you know, in, during all crises, what 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 tends to happen is we we learn from it. We are, we we adjust so we don't make the same mistakes, um, whatever those mistakes may be. So you know, GFC um, or the the you know the the recession you know here with inflated um, with inflated. You know, um, asset values and, and and Asian financial crisis. So we so we so we adjust. And I guess, um, you know, will we get back to normal? Absolutely. What that normal is, whether we're at you know a bit below, will the recovery be quick? Well, from a personal perspective, um, I know the first thing that I'll be doing is I'll be going out and, and enjoying a nice meal at you know one of my favourite local restaurants with the family. You know, those those things just yep. seem um, so precious these days. And I guess um, the hope is that that restaurant is still there. Absolutely, and you know, I guess hopefully they've got a, you know, if they if they've got a, you know, if they've got financial obligations, hopefully they've, you know, they've, they're, their bank or their finance is supporting them through it, and they and they're availing them all those great, um, you know, government stimulus and incentive and and and, and protection mechanisms that are in place. Um, but we have spent quite a bit of time in lockdown and I, I guess we have adjusted our lifestyles whether that's the way we spend what we spend on the way we're purchasing mm. so um i'm sure most house most households are similar that you know packages are arriving you know all sorts of you know weird so and, yes. and, and time because you can't go out there and buy that you know those pair of sneakers or whatever it may be um, so there's got to be that type of impact. Yes, there will be a recovery. We know there will be a recovery because people will be allowed out. But it's what, you know, how we reinvent 
and you know the the you know what will what will come out stronger post mm. post um post covid and and what will lag and there will definitely be winners and 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 there'll be other industries and businesses that will be affected and will probably be permanently changed yeah that because because we we will evolve and we will be different whether we like it or not um so yeah, I'd love to have a crystal ball. And, uh, yeah, and of course, wouldn't we all? But you know, where, where we're sitting at the moment, it's uh, yeah. Let's get through. Let's get out of stage four and into uh, you know, and into something. The relative that... relaxation of stage three. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then hopefully on from there. So the, the, the evolution piece is an interesting one as well, where I think we could look at the, the the world that we were living in with online shopping, and if you looked at the rates of online shopping over the course of the last five, 10, 15 years. Now, I don't know what the numbers are, but I think it would be safe to say that it's increased in popularity. Um, and a lot of retailers have taken to either, you know, complementing their, their physical presence retail store with an online presence. Mm -hmm. um, the same with, um, same probably with flexible working arrangements as well within corporate environments. Um, how do you see the impact of the coronavirus on um, the working environment? So if we fast forward five years in the future, how much of an impact do you think the coronavirus and our experiences over the course of the last six and probably the next six months will have impacted where we are in five years' time? Yeah, well, um, you know, humans are amazing. We, we, we adapt and, and we've got no choice. And we, we have over, you know, thousands. Millennia. Of years. Yeah, millennia. Um, and, 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 and this is another, a, a, another great situation. I was, um, yeah, I was one of those people that... Um, spent most of my days in the office, you know, from home to the office and, 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 and back again. And I guess what COVID has, um, COVID has taught us all is that there, there, is, a, there is another way and, and, and it does get done. And, you know, we've, we've all availed in large organisations of flexible working arrangements for a long, long time. Mm. I guess what, what, what's happened here is it's fast forwarded, at, I would say five years, the, the, the acceptance um, the way the, the the way we work, and the fact that it does give us, you know, mm. sometimes greater output. I guess what what we miss out is that, um, you know, that one place, one time, you know, um, you know, around a board table. However, we have fast forwarded what we, you know, what ordinarily would take us a long, long time um, in a compressed sort of three to six months. And I guess we had all our learnings early on. Now we're all in a pretty good rhythm, I'd say. Um, and it's about having that discipline. Discipline, um, get it, you know, I suppose getting ahead of the day. Mm. It, um, because you do lose that structure of being in the office. And whether we like it or not, we, we do have that, that routine of putting, in a, putting on a, a suit and tie, whatever your, whatever your uniform may or may not be. Yeah. And, and, and that mindset. And that does inherently have a whole bunch of disciplines built in it because you get to work by a certain period of time and then you, and then your day begins. At home, you lose that. So unless you 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 structure yourself accordingly, you, the day does get ahead of you. Yeah. So I kind of I kind of feel that if you really nail that 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 morning, you sort of you you, you win the day. Yes. And and. And the except going back to your earlier point around, you know, what 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 does the environment, you know, look and feel like from a flexible working arrangement? Yeah, we've absolutely, you know, sped that up. It's it's entrenched, and I don't think that's I think that's one of the areas which were, which has changed forever. On your earlier point on, you know, will we we just revert to normal? Mm. Well. You know, I think that a lot of people, the, the, the working from home aspect has taught a lot of people that are, there are different ways and they are acceptable and it's okay to hear the dog barking. Where yeah. I, a year ago, it wasn't okay for the dog to be barking in the background. Yeah. Working, yeah. With people to be chained to their desks, working as they would in the office. All those taboos are sort of gone now. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And, and hopefully that's correct. And then for that, for that silver lining, I guess there's a, a potential knock on into commercial tenancy prices and the requirement for businesses like ANZ to have major um, central offices where 
thousands upon thousands of people turn up every single day. Um, so there's always there's always a knock on effect, and it's sort of that the butterfly flaps its wings somewhere, and there's a tornado somewhere else. It'll be interesting to see how those various um, chaotic circumstances impact each other as it as it runs through the cycle over the course of the next few years. But I think the concept of accelerated adaptation is a very interesting one, and, and I think you know there's mother is the uh, necessity is the mother of invention is the saying I think, um, and we really have all had to had to reinvent a lot of what we do and how we do it over the course of the last six months and no doubt over the next six to 18. And if we can take the best of that um, while still returning to the to the best of what we had previously, maybe this has actually, you know, in a very painful way, but it's actually accelerated us into a, a point in the future that, as you said, we maybe wouldn't have reached for another five or 10 years. Yeah. One of the, sorry, sorry, no. I'll say one of the, one of the challenges for us has been, um, you know, our businesses continue to operate as a recruitment firm. Um, we've engaged in one or two other ancillary type activities to, to help keep us busy and to help generate revenue. But fundamentally still, um, you know, ANZ has a requirement. We go to the market. We find the, pe the people that can fit that requirement and introduce them. That's all been done virtually for us, obviously, over the course of the last six months, which, which comes with its challenges. But the majority of it's not too hard because we can still have meetings like this. We can still get to know somebody. It's not what we're used to, and, and I would still feel it's not as natural for me. Um, but that piece can be managed. The interview process with our clients can be managed, again, through these sorts of interactions. One of the challenges that I think I've seen most of my clients not necessarily struggle with, but, but try to address in different ways, is onboarding somebody and embedding the business culture into that person whilst they're sitting at home at the other end of a laptop and not in the office with their peers feeling the rhythms of the banter of the place and the operating rhythms of, of this is how things get done. And if there's a question that someone has, they can't just ask, you know, Sally next door or Bob um, on the other side, they've got to find somebody, dial them up, speak to them and engage to ask sometimes what may be very small, seemingly minuscule questions, but ultimately without that, you can't move on to the next step. As Ian said, there's no silver bullet, but how have you, how have you managed to address those sorts of issues over the course of the last few months? Have you had many, New people start? Um, we haven't had a whole heap of new people start, but we, 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 we're just onboarding a couple now, and, and it'll be interesting. And that's the, that's the million dollar question. How do you replicate that, you know, that, that environment when everyone's, rem when everyone's remote? And, that, and that's been our challenge. And, and that's the intangible of being in an office, sharing best practice, um, bringing the, the new recruit up to speed around process and, mm -hmm. and Access and, and, and culture and you know that, that conversation around the water cooler that yeah. that's not around you know and even listening to your colleagues talk to their customers on the telephone and understanding oh, okay that's that, that's how a lot of learning I think takes place is through osmosis in a workplace where it's not a formal structured learning plan but you're listening to Sally and you're listening to Bob and you're going geez that that sounded good I liked how they approached that that was that was energy. smart you're feeding off each other's energy and and, yeah. and, and the vibe around hey, this is how we do things, this is why we do things, um, and, and, and the people next to you, if you're having a good day, a bad day, having, you know, mm -hmm. you know, having someone to have a chat to, someone different to have a chat to outside your, you know, your, 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 structured, um, your structured arrangements with your line managers and so on, which, you know, is a lot more challenging. You've got to reach out to do that in, in, in this environment, and mm -hmm. I kind of think that it's harder to have that small talk um, on, a, on a phone conversation. Absolutely. Or, Video where you know you would you know wander down and have a coffee and and, and talk about those you know less meaningful things um, which creates rapport. Yeah, and and I think that's something that's easy enough to do once you know the person. You can maintain those relationships. You can continue that rapport, but developing it in the first place. Yeah, that's a that's a real challenge. Yeah, and it's hard to develop that conversation over the over video because you've got to you've got to go out and reach out to that person. To have a conversation where you can't about nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why have you called me? I just wanted to chat for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, but I think I think that's a part of us as well, you know, and a mindset and a paradigm shift where to us that seems strange because we've not done that before. It's not been a natural behavior for us. And to do yeah. it feels uncomfortable. Whereas hopefully for not the next generation necessarily, but people perhaps to become more for that to become more commonplace and for new entrants into the market to realize that that is important and it is okay to do that and so if i do arrange a zoom meeting with somebody for absolutely no reason other than 
it would be good to have a chat and get to know them a little bit. Whilst that would seem strange to you or I at the moment, maybe in two or three years' time, that, that won't seem strange. That will just be how it operates, and, um, and that will be a, an evolutionary leap as well from a, from a technology and a social perspective. Well, I, you know, I didn't think that we could mobilise, I don't know, 30 or 40 or 50,000 people virtually overnight. Mm. Uh, that's ANZ and, you know, all the other um, large Aussie majors did exactly the same. Um, virtually overnight, sitting at home, and we all operated, you know, with very, very little, um, you know, sort of intervention required. Yep, yep. Um, and look at us six months down the track and it's BAU. It's, it's BAU now, business as usual, absolutely. So um, perhaps it won't be two years out where you just tap someone for a Zoom meeting, some unknown person, maybe it's two months out. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you look at your, your customers from that perspective, and I don't mean the bank's end customers, but within your specific business and your first line customers um, would be the, the broker and the aggregator community. I think that would be hopefully fair to say. Yeah. How has ANZ found or how have you found the interaction with your brokers? How have you supported them through this time? Have there been any particular agendas that you've been able to implement? So the, the, the environment moved relatively quickly and I guess, um, you know, we, we have all the, all the support and all the know-how of a large Aussie corporate. Mm. Um, a lot of brokers are small businesses. Yeah. And they don't have that support and infrastructure that, 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 that we do, supported by, their, supported by their aggregators. However, you know, small business having to sort of, you know, interrupt what they've been doing for a long period of time and, and, and work remotely. Um, and, you know, I guess the key for us initially was making sure that we got, you know, that, that, that information flowing through so that, that those communication lines open. So we started by... Um, as everyone was getting used to um, video conferencing, we started with a lot of, um, you know, sort of conference calls where we yeah. would, you know, move that information through, particularly initially when the government was, um, you know, rallying around um, a lot of their, um, a lot of their programs of job keepers, job seeker and, and, and government guarantee loans, deferral, um, P&I deferrals. So we had to get that out to the broader community very, very quickly. So we went from conference calls and then and then webinars and everyone became very comfortable with, with webinars and us disseminating large bits of info um, that were moving very, very quickly to the broader to the broader community. So that was very, very important. And getting every everyone comfortable with that technology. Also, what we found is that um, particularly initially we we intentionally over communicated. Yep because of the breakdown of everything we thought was normal, we needed um, to over communicate to ensure that we're all on the same page, us, our people, and our you know, first and, and, and second line customers, were all aligned around what, we're, what, what, our, you know, what the immediate challenge was. And you know, the immediate challenge today was very different to the immediate challenge you know, a week down the track. So we just yeah. need, you know, we needed to sort of you know, ensure that everyone was, you know, to speed for, for you know, for, for the challenge to hand um, that week. And now we're sort of talking about unwind packages in, in most states. Yeah. Um, in some instances, extension of, 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 um, of, of programs. So there's two sort of very different things where, you know, we're, we're dealing with here, you know, a lot of check-in calls and, and so on. So, you know, that... Yeah, you know, it was probably unconceivable six months ago when, when we got into this. But, you know, yes, we are getting to, you know, the other end of, you know, various programs. Yeah. Oh, great. Great. So I think in terms of, of trying to distill or wrap up the conversation that we've had today, that the key themes really seem to be trying to figure out, you know, what, what we can learn from this um, to take into the future, not just in the event of another crisis, but um, how we can develop our teams and how we can develop our operating rhythms. In, in the new world. Um, mm -hmm. There's themes of um, mental health awareness, I guess, is around trying to identify people within your teams that need additional support um, and, and how to support those people on a remote basis and how to support them from a flexibility perspective again going forward. Um, and I think the, the, mental, the mental and the physical health um, often are sort of hand in hand. And, you know, with, with the, you know, it's very easy to roll out of bed um, and, 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 you know, sort of log on and, and, and off you go, particularly if you're in a, in a relatively, you know, small home. Um, you know, having that discipline and structure around, 
you know, being healthy physically, you know, help, helps with being, you know, mentally ready to, with, 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 with the challenges that yes. we're all facing. Sorry. Absolutely. I'll... No, no. Um, so, I mean, I think, I think it's, it's really around that culture. It's the adaptation. It's the learning and the resilience that if we can, if we can learn how to improve our, our capabilities around those things and take that into the future, then um, whilst this has been a terrible experience for most people, hopefully there will be some learnings and some positivity that we can take with it into the future. Um, um, absolutely. And we've seen a lot of our customers. So we, we've had to change the way we do things. Many, many of our customers have done the same. So they, uh, they've adapted their business models, as you have, um, around how you do things, expectations, you know, who, you know, who you, you, you know, what, what, who your customers were last week aren't your customers, you know, the following week. We've all adjusted our business models. And yeah, the silver lining for many of these businesses will be that hey, I've I've created an alternate revenue stream which I'll keep when I when I return to my new normal, and and I open the doors at you know yeah. my clothing store or my restaurant or my you know surf shop or whatever it may be, um, with a supplementary source of income. Yeah. So getting through this period is important because I think we'll be okay at the other end. Um, and, and perhaps we'll be a little, yeah, a little, a little smarter on you know what our you know what our business model should look like going forward. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, Angelo, thank you very very much for your time. It's been uh, it's been a great chat. Really appreciated your your insights. Um, and uh, we will be back in uh, in a week or so with another episode of the Thomas Frost Conversations. But for now, Angelo, thank you very much. Stay safe, stay well. Thanks, you. And I'll, uh, I hope to catch up with you face to face again one day. <laughs>